श्री सच्चिदानंद सदगुरु साईनाथ महाराज की जय सदगुरु भरद्वाज महाराज की जय श्री साई सच्चरित्रा चैप्टर सिक्स रामनवमी फेस्टिवल एंड मसीद रिपेयर्स बिफोर डिस्क्राइबिंग रामनवमी फेस्टिवल एंड मसीद रिपेयर्स द आथर मेक्स सम प्रिलिमिनरी रिमार्क्स अबाउट सदगुरु एज फॉलोस एफिकसी ऑफ द टच ऑफ द गुरुज हैंड When Sadguru is the helmsman, he is sure to carry us safely and easily beyond the only ocean. The word Sadguru brings to mind Sai Baba, the perfect master. He appears to me as if standing before me and applying udi to my forehead and placing his hand of blessing on my head. Then joy fills my heart and love overflows my eyes. Wonderful is the power of the touch of Guru's hand. The subtle body, which cannot be burnt by the gross fire, is destroyed by the mere touch of the Guru's hand. And the sins of many past births are cleaned and washed away. Even the speech of those who feel agitated when they hear religious and godly talks attain calmness. The sight of Sai Baba's handsome form chokes our throat with joy, makes the eyes overflow with tears and overwhelms the heart with emotions. It awakens in us, I am He, Soham, Brahma Consciousness manifests the joy of self-realization and dissolves, dissolving the distinction of I am. and to makes us one with the supreme when i began to read scriptures yet every step i am reminded of my sadguru sai baba who assumes the form of rama or krishna and makes me listen to his li- his life for instance when i sit to listen to bhagavat sai becomes krishna from top to toe and i think he sings the bhagavat or uddhav gita for the welfare of the devotees when i myself start to write anything i cannot compose a few words or sentences but when he of his own accord makes me write i go on writing and there is no end to it when the disciples egoism props up he presses it down with his hand and gives him his own power makes him achieve his object and thus satisfies and blesses him if anyone prostrates before sai and surrenders him heart and soul to him then all the chief objects of life that is dharma artha kama and moksha are attained easily and unsolicitedly four parts of uh, karma dhyan yoga and bhakti lead us separately to god of these the path of bhakti is thorny and full of pits and ditches and thus difficult to traverse but if you relying on your sadguru avoid the pits and thorns and walk straight it will take you to your destination so say sai baba after philosophic philosophizing about the self existent brahma his power maya to create this world and the world created and stating that all these three are ultimately one and the same the author quotes sai baba words guaranteeing the welfare of the bhaktas there will never be any dearth or scarcity regarding food and clothes in my devotee's home it is my special characteristic that i always look to and provide for the welfare of those devotees who worship me all heartedly with their minds ever fixed on me Lord Krishna has also said the same in the Gita therefore strive not much 
for food and clothes if you want anything beg of the lord renounce worldly honors try to get lord's grace and blessings and be honored in his court do not be deluded by worldly honor the form of the deity should be firmly fixed in the mind let all the senses and mind be ever devoted to the worship of the lord let there be let there be no attraction for any other thing fix the mind in remembering me always so that it will not wander elsewhere towards body wealth and home then it will be calm peaceful and care free this is the sign of the mind being well engaged in good company if the mind is vagrant it cannot be called well merged in him after quoting these words the author goes on to relate the story story of ramanami festival in shirdi as ramanami is the most celebrated festival at shirdi another fuller account as published in sri sai leela magazine of 1925 page 197 He is also referred to and a summary of the festival as related in both these accounts is attempted here origin one mr gopal rao gund was a surveyor in survey department at copper gaon he was a great devotee of baba he had three wives but had no issue with sai baba's blessings a son was born to him in the joy that he felt due to this an idea of celebrating a fair or urus occurred to him in the year 1897 and he placed it for consideration before other shirdi devotees that is tatya patil dada kote patil and madhavrao desh pande they all approved of the idea and obtained sai baba's permission and blessing for it then an application was made to get the collector sanction for celebrating the urus but as the village kulkarni held against holding the fair the sanction was refused but yes sai baba had blessed it they tried again and ultimately succeeded in getting the collector sanction the day for the urus was fixed on ram navami after having con- consultation with sai baba it seems he had some purpose behind this that is the unification of the two festivals the urus and the ram navami and the unification of the two communities the hindus and the mohammedans as future events showed this end or object was duly really achieved though the permission was obtained but other difficulties cropped up Shirdi was a village and there was scarcity of water there were two wells in the village the one in in use dried up soon and the water from the second was brackish this brackish water was turned into sweet water by sai baba by putting flowers into it as the water of this well was insufficient so tatya patel had to arrange to get water from outside temporary shops were to be constructed and wrestling bouts arranged gopal rao gund had a friend by name damu anna kasar of ahmednagar he also was uh, similarly unhappy in the matter of uh, progeny progeny though he had uh, two wives he too was blessed by sai baba with sons and mr gund prevailed upon his friend to prepare and supply one flag for the procession of the fair he also succeeded in inducing mr nana saheb nimonkar to supply another flag both these flags were taken in procession through the village and finally fixed at the two corners of the masjid which is called by sai baba's dwarka mai this is being done even now the sandal procession there there was another procession which was started in this fair the idea of sandal procession originated with one mr amir shakkar dalal a mohammedan bhakta from korhela this procession is held in honor of great muslim saints 
sandal that is chandan paste and scrapings are put in the thali flat the dishes uh, with incense burning before them and carried in procession to the accompaniment of band and music through the village and then after returning to the masjid the contents of uh, the dishes are thrown on the nimbar and walls of the masjid this work was managed by mr amir shakkar for the first 3 years and then afterwards by his wife so on the same day the two processions the flags by the hindus and sandal by the muslims went on side by side and are still going on without any problem arrangement this day was very dear and sacred to the devotees of sai baba most of them turned up for the occasion and took part in the management of the fair tatya kote patel looked to all outward affairs while the internal management was entirely left to radha krishna bai radha krishna mai a female devotee of baba her residence was full of guests on the occasion and she had to look after their needs and also arrange for all the paraphernalia of the fair another work which she willingly did was to clean and whitewash the entire masjid its walls and floor which were blackened and were full of uh, soot on account of the perpetual dhuni of sai baba this she did during the night when sai baba had gone to sleep every alternate night in the chavadi she had to take out all the things including the dhuni and after through cleaning thorough cleaning and white washing replace them as they were before feeding the poor which was so dear to sai baba was also a important item in this fair for this purpose cooking on a grand scale and preparing various sweet dishes was done in radha krishna mai's lodging and various rich and wealthy devotees took a leading part took a leading part in this transformation of urs into ramanami festival things were going on in this way and the fair was gradually increasing in importance till 1912 when a change took place that year one devotee mr krishna rao jogeshwar bhishma uh, came for the fair with dada saheb kaparde of amravati and was staying in the dikshitwada while he was uh, laying in the veranda and while mr lakshman rao alias kaka mahajani was going with puja material to the masjid a thought arose in his mind and he accosted the latter thus there is some providential arrangement in the fact that the urus or fair is celebrated in shirdi on ramanami ramanami is very dear to all the hindus then why not begin the ramanami festival the celebration of the birth of sri ram on this day here kaka mahajani liked the idea and it was arranged to get baba's permission in this matter the main difficulty was how to secure a haridas who would do kirtan and sing the glories of the lord on the occasion but bishma solved the difficulty by saying that his ram akyan the composition on rama's birth was ready and he would do the kirtan himself while kaka mahajani should play on the harmonium it was also arranged to get the santwada ginger powder mixed with sugar as prasad prepared by radha krishna mai so they immediately went to the masjid to get baba's permission baba who knew everything and aware of what was happening there asked mahajani as to what was going on the on in the wada being rather perturbed mahajani could not catch the purport of the question and remained silent then baba asked bishma what he had to say 
he explained the idea of celebrating ramanami festival and asked for baba's permission and baba gladly gave it all rejoiced and made preparations for the jayanti festival next day the masjid was decorated with buntings etc a cradle was supplied by radha krishna mai and placed in front of baba's seat and the proceedings started bishma stood up for kirtan and mahajani began to play on the harmonium sai baba sent a man to call mahajani she has hesitating to go doubtful whether baba would allow the festival to go on but when he went to baba the latter asked him as to what was going on and why the cradle was placed there he answered that the ramanami festival had commenced and the cradle was put out for that purpose then baba took a garland from the nimbar and placed it round his neck and sent another garland for bishma then the kirtan commenced when it came to a close loud sounds of victory to ram went up and gulal was thrown up all around amidst band and music everybody was overjoyed when suddenly a roar was heard the red powder thrown promiscuously went up and somehow fell into baba's eyes baba got wild and began to scold and abuse loudly people got frightened and took to their heels the intimate devotees who knew baba well took these scoldings and outpourings of baba as blessings in disguise they thought that when ram was born it was proper for baba to get wild and enraged to kill ravan and his demons in the form of egoism and wicked thoughts etc besides they knew that whenever a new thing was undertaken at shirdi it was usual with baba to get wild and angry and so they kept quiet radha krishna mai was rather afraid and thought that baba might break her cradle and she asked mahajani to pull the cradle back when he went to loosen and unfasten the cradle baba went to him and asked him not to remove it then after some time baba became calm and that day's program including maha puja and aarti was finished later on mr mahajani asked baba for permission to remove the cradle baba refused the same saying that the festival was not at over yet over next day another kirtan and gopal kala ceremony an earthen pot containing perched rice mixed with curd is hung to be broken after kirtan and the contents distributed to all as was done by lord krishna amongst his cow head was performed and then baba allowed the cradle to be removed while the ramanami festival was thus going on the procession of the two flags by day and that of the sandal by night went off with the usual pomp and show from this time onwards the urus of baba was transformed into ramanami festival from next year 1913 the items in the program of ramanami began to increase radhakrishna mai started a nam saptah from 11th day of chaitra for this all devotees took part by turns and she also joined it sometimes early in the morning as ramanami festival is celebrated in many places all over the country the difficulty of getting a haridas was felt again but 5 or 6 days before the festival mahajani incidentally met bala bova who was known as modern tukaram and got him to do the kirtan that year the next year 1914 another ba- bala bova satarkar of uh, birhat siddha kavate district satara 
could not uh, act as a haridas in his own town as plague was prevailing there and so he came to shirdi with baba's permission which was secured through kaka saheb dikshit he did the kirtan and was sufficiently recompensed for his labor the difficulty of getting a new haridas every year was finally solved from 1914 by sai baba as he entrusted this function to das ganu maharaj permanently and since that time he has been successfully and creditably conducting that function till now since 1912 this festival began to grow gradually year by year from the 8th to 12th of chaitra shirdi looked like a bee hive of men shops began to increase celebrated wrestlers took part in wrestling feeding of the poor was done on a grander scale hard work and sincere effort of radhakrishna mai turned shirdi into a samsthan paraphernalia increased a beautiful horse a palanquin chariot and many silver items utensils pots buckets pictures mirrors etc were presented elephants were also sent for a, for the procession though all this paraphernalia increased enormously sai baba ignored all these things and manifested his simplicity and modesty as before it is to be noted that both the hindus and mohammedans have been working in unison in both the processions during the entire festival and there has been no confrontation or quarrel between them at all so far first about 5000 to 7000 people used to gather but that figure went up to 75000 in some years still there was no outbreak of any epidemic disease nor any rights worth the name during past so many years repairs to the masjid another important idea occurred to gopal gun just as he started the urus or fair he thought that he should repair and re, uh, renovate the masjid so in order to carry out the repairs he collected stones and got them dressed but this work was not assigned to him this was reserved for nana sahib chindorkar and the payment work for kaka di kaka sahib dikshit initially baba was unwilling to allow them to have work done but with the intervention of mahalsapati a local devotee of baba his permission was secured baba took a small gadi for his seat discarding the useful usual piece of uh, sack cloth used till then in 1911 the sabha mandap courtyard was also put in order with great labor and effort the open space in front of the masjid was very small and inconvenient Kaka Sahib Dikshit wanted to extend it and put a roofing on it a great expense we got iron posts pillars and trusses and started the work at night all the devotees worked hard and fixed the posts but baba when he returned from chavadi next morning uprooted them all and threw them out once it so happened that baba got very excited caught a pole with one hand and began to shake and uproot it and with the other hand caught tatya patel's neck he took by force tatya's peta stuck a match set it on the fire and throw it in a pit at that time baba's eyes flashed like burning embers none dared to look at him all go terribly 
frightened baba took out a rupee from his pocket and threw it there as if it were an offering on an auspicious occasion tatya was also much frightened none know what was going to happen to tatya and none dared to interfere bagoji shinde the leper devotee of baba made a bold advance but he was pushed aside by baba madhavrao was also similarly treated pelted with brick pieces so all these who went to intercept were similarly dealt with but after some time baba sanger cooled down he sent for a shopkeeper got from him an embroidered peta and himself tied it on tatya's head as if he was being given a special honor all the people were wonderstruck to see this strange behavior of baba they were at a loss to know what enraged baba so suddenly and what led him to assault tatya patil and why his anger cooled down the next moment baba was sometimes very calm and quiet and talked sweet things with love but suddenly with or without any reason got enraged many such incidents may be related but i do not know which to choose and which to omit i therefore refer them as they occur to me in the next chapter the question whether baba was a hindu or a mohammedan will be taken up and his yogic practices and powers and other matters will also be dealt with bow to sri sai peace be to all